Good morning, everyone. We welcome you to today's training and webinar. We're going to give uh, just a few seconds here in a minute. Looks like Debbie's coming in now. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning. All right, we're getting our screen ready. Getting our screen ready. We got a lot of people coming in right now. Excited to have you back. Can't believe it's been two weeks. It's been a busy two weeks and uh, yeah. grateful to have you here, Debbie. Absolutely. We just did uh, our Simply Said land voice or a brevity. So if they're coming from there to here, this will be a good segue, actually. That's really cool. I know we've got a really great topic on negotiations today. Before we jump into that, Debbie, I want to give a quick plug. Know we've got a lot of land voice users, previous users to land voice. Uh, we got some really big news that's hitting the um, hitting next week. So there's a lot of people out there across the country that are listing a lot of homes through pre foreclosure, and there's more and more coming online. We're getting news that there there could be a lot of foreclosures hit our database next week. So for all of you land voice users out there, I just want to put in a little plug. Be watching your database next week. I would say midweek, you could see a, a pretty big increase in the amount of foreclosure data that you've been seeing. So watch for that. And uh, with that little plug, Debbie, love that you're here with us. Appreciate you being with us today. Really I'm grateful. And I'm excited to be here. And I just wrote down a note about those uh, notice of defaults. I'm going to introduce you to someone. Maybe I can bring him on as a guest. He's a fabulous client of ours here in Orange County, and he works notice of defaults almost exclusively, and he's quite good at it, and he loves to share. So I'll, I'll make a note great. of that. I'll do that. That would be you. fantastic. All Absolutely. Right. Well, let's jump in. It'd be interesting. I don't know how many of you just left the Brivity webinar and are joining us over here, because I know many of you have Brivity as your CRM and Land Voice. So if you've been on the last session, you can type a note in the chat box. So um, that will be good. And by the way, Connie, you know, it's interesting. And I, that's why I'd love to bring Robert on because Connie's saying it's so sad, but here's the thing and what got Robert passionate about working these. He personally in his life had a situation and he didn't have the help that he needed. He's really passionate about meeting with people, helping them if they can save their home and stay in their home. Um, he even works with a lender that can help in some situations clean up their credit and refi because he feels that will be a client for the future. But you know what he's telling me, Connie, is many of these people have 50% equity. Yeah. And if he didn't get in there, and help them, they're like down to the last few days, they would lose all of their equity. It's crazy because there's not that many short sales out there. Most of them actually have equity. So let's dive into negotiations. So I want to say hello. If I haven't met you before. I'm Debbie DeGroat, co-founder and CEO of Forward Coaching. We do lots of work with the fabulous Land Voice group and Rivety and lots of people in your world. So always happy to give you some great ideas on a Friday. So today we're going to talk about negotiations. I found this awesome quote, Sean, salesmanship, there is no more fascinating business in the world than selling. Without salespeople, there would be little progress made. Right. So the fact that you do get paid well when you have a successful negotiation and outcome, you know, it really doesn't change the fact that what you do changes people's lives every day. Right. I mean, owning real estate, whether it's their home or an investment or helping their children buy a home, it's the American dream. And how nice we're not selling some gadget that nobody really needs. So, but what's the difference between a salesperson and a true negotiator? Well, one of the best ways I feel, you know, to, to master selling and be happier at it and have less stress is improve your skill as a negotiator. Because I feel a salesperson, they know their business, they, they, present the product, they find the right house, they put the person in the house, they say, do you want to buy it? They're, they're going to write up the agreement. That, that's a salesperson. 
A negotiator, though, really gets in the mind of the prospect. They dig in to understand their motivation, to understand their fear and hesitation, to collaborate and find solutions, right? And, and I really feel master negotiators shine and they will shine in this market that's ahead of us because it's going to get a lot busier and a lot crazier over the next few years. And, you know, we've got the whole commission thing going on out there and it's going to require a higher level of skill. It just is. Right. So I'd love to ask you guys, you have to type this in the chat box, just on a scale of one to 10, where would you rank your skill of negotiation? So let's say that you and I were negotiating a deal together and I'm watching and I'm listening and I'm thinking about it. What would you score yourself? You know, and I, I've had a lot of practice. I got to be honest, Sean, I think I would probably score myself at a six because I feel like this is such a deep uh, pool of opportunity for a skill to always increase. I don't think we, we'd we ever arrive, right? If we were really- Such a good point. Yeah. Like it's just, it's a skill we're going to keep working on every day of our life, right? Yeah. Every day. And and by the way, speaking of, of our lives, when you're a fabulous negotiator in business, that kind of carries over, right? Into lots of other aspects in your life. Um, you know, if you think about, well, what would stop me from becoming a 10? Am I too emotional? And emotional doesn't mean like in a boohoo way. It, it might just be kind of a lot of drama, a lot of drama, a lot of words, a lot of noise or argumentative. I'm a little defensive. I'm a little harsh. I'm a little abrupt. I'm a 99D. I really had to work on that because if I'm not careful, I can be very abrupt and bossy and that will really screw up the negotiation. Or maybe you're too focused on your own agenda, which often is, I really need this deal. I really need this deal. And then, and then we're not focused on what's going on in that moment and how that customer or client might be feeling. Or it could be lack of preparation. We were talking about in the, the Brevity webinar, crafting the words and that the worst time to be thinking about what you're going to say is when you're saying it. So it's very important. You guys have thousands of dollars on the table Make sure you're preparing, even scripting your negotiations out. So could your communication skills use some improvement? Probably we all could. And then maybe you're not a 10 because you give up too easily. You know, I was always trained that the first six no's are reflex and that most salespeople will stop at two or three and give up right? If they even go that far, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. Getting that far is uh, definitely a skill. So secret number one, the negotiation theory. I love this quote too. A cooperative approach is the surest path to understanding the other party and discovering new sources of value. So sometimes I think when we think of negotiators, we think of someone who's like a hammer, right? They're going to beat the other party into submission. That's really not the fine art of negotiation, though. High-level negotiators are able to find ways to collaborate, to calm the nerves, to bring the emotions down, to be that calm, cool head in the deal. And focus on motivation. You know, their interests, their concerns, because focusing on their motivation is much more powerful than focusing on the stated position. So let me give you an example of this, Sean. Let's say that I have your house listed and it's a good market, as we all know right now, you know, things sell pretty quickly, but yours isn't selling. And I, I want to get your property reduced. And you say to me, you know what, Debbie? I am absolutely not going to adjust my price. 
Well, I can focus on that. I can take that on. Or I could pivot over to motivation. And I could say, well, Sean, you know, it's your property. I, I respect whatever you choose to do. May I ask you a question? You know, you had shared with me that you ideally needed to be moved by Easter. Has that timeline changed? Or, or do we still need to be on track for that? And he might say, no, I, I that's still when I want to move. Okay. So based on that, I wonder, wouldn't it make sense for us to go ahead and adjust that price today so we could get you sold and moved in that timeline that you want? See, sometimes if they... They say those things to us. I'm not going to do this. I'll never take that. That offer is ridiculous. I'm not giving a counter. That's a stated position. And if we take that as the gospel, we're not going to get very far in the negotiation. So think, I need to pivot over and go back to that motivation, the concerns, what's important to them. Debbie, just real quick, I hope everybody heard it. What you just said is just a whole bunch of just genius, right? We validated, you stayed within rapport, you came from curiosity and asked a question to pivot then to motivation, all genius parts of the negotiation. I didn't really even address the the ridiculous statement he made. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And if you notice too, it is a habit of mine I shared on the last Zoom of saying us or we. So doesn't it make sense for us to then consider adjusting the price now? So and, good. And, and downswing at the end of your voice, because downswing is more commanding, more powerful. Well, doesn't it make sense to consider adjusting the price? No, I sound like a weak mm -hmm. and intimate. Right. So all the little subtleties, likability. I read the other day that without rapport, persuasion is not likely to ever occur. So if, if I'm trying to move Sean forward and make these tough decisions to adjust his property to get it sold, if I've not built a foundation of rapport, getting to know what he needs and wants, asking great questions, showing that I'm concerned, making it all about them. If there is no rapport, he is going to fight me. So motivation is important. Rapport is important. And that falls under that category of called likability. And then solution-based, looking for solutions to the problem versus beating the other side into submission is always the best option. And, you know, and, and sometimes it's just minor things that could be adjusted that allow everyone to feel like they got a little bit of what they want. And if you are an agent that uh, negotiates in a very aggressive fashion with other agents on the other side of your deal, you might want to rethink that. You know, Chris Voss from the book Never Split the Difference he said that if you have an aggressive demeanor, an aggressive confronting tonality, you might as well accept the fact that that's never going to serve you well. Calm down, slow down, and, and look to build rapport, not just with your buyer or seller, but with all parties in the deal. And you know, Sean, sometimes that's hard because the other agents aren't always nice. They're not. And it's, right. that's so big. Like as humans, we get stuck kind of focusing on the problems rather than always being solution based and and bringing a tough, you know, maybe another negotiator, real estate agent that is one of those tough negotiators, bringing them over and kind of focusing on the solutions rather than all the problems that can be difficult as well. And so it's so important yeah. for us to pivot and kind of move not only motivation, but to help everyone kind of focus on what is those the right solution for each party. And this is really a relatively simple one, but you know, sometimes when we're in the drama of the deal, we can't see the forest for the trees, but a client called yeah. yesterday and said, Debbie, I'm really stuck on this negotiation because it's a really good buyer, but they had some special kind of financing 
I don't even know what it was. And they had a deadline for their rate and the deal had to close in three weeks, but the seller could not move for 60 days. And, and the seller's like, well, I'm not moving. And the buyer's like, well, I have to close. And she's like, I guess the deal's just gonna blow up, up and blow apart. And I said, well, does the buyer have to move in right away? I don't know. Well, why don't you find out? Because if the buyer doesn't have to move in right away, why don't they do a rent back with the seller? And then you tell this, your seller, well, you know what? You're going to have to pay more than you're paying now. You're going to have to pay their payment per day. But the good news is you don't have to move twice. You get this awesome buyer and the money's in the bank. I said, see, that's a solution. And you know what? It worked. But that's what we're talking about right? Just simple things, finding those solutions. You know, we often forget that people make their decisions based on emotion, and then they look for logical reasons to justify what they just did or why they want to do what they want to do. You know, perfect example, some of us here, now I'm not doing this anymore, <laughs> but in the past, it would be like, I have to I have to lease that nice car because if I have that nice car then when I drive in front of my listing appointments they're going to say oh she's obviously so successful. Well, what did I want? I emotionally wanted to buy or lease that nice let's call it Mercedes. So I'm trying to find logical reasons so I can write it off on my taxes. I'll look more successful. They'll they'll trust me, blah, 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 right? <laughs> the bottom line, <laughs> it's emotion. And I think even the most analytical people, the most analytical people on the planet, don't forget, like they could be a rocket scientist. They're not going to buy a house based on numbers and logic. They're going to buy it. They're going to want it based on emotion. You're just going to have to give that person more logical reasons to justify their emotion, right? So just don't try to just sell numbers. It's always about emotion. So secret number two, negotiation skill. Emotional intelligence. High stakes negotiations can create massive anxiety and you need to master that skill of controlling your ego and emotions. You know, this we might do a different day, but there is the book, Emotional Intelligence 2.0, and it is easy to find. Find it online. It's a small book. It's very easy to read. In it, there is a code where you can go and take your EQ test. It's not an IQ test. It's an EQ test. How aware am I of how I impact others? That's part one. And also, um, how intuitive am I in reading the scene and understanding people? And it's up, you know, the score is up to a hundred. And what's great about when you take that it only takes 10 minutes, very, very easy. You'll get a full report back and it will talk to you about your emotional intelligence strengths and weaknesses. Like Sean, I won't hire a coach that doesn't have an EQ score in both categories of a minimum of 85%, minimum. Now, someone who's a fabulous person that I know, and some of you know, so I'm not going to say the name, but when she took her EQ the first time, she was 56, and she was pretty shocked by that. But then she read the book, and she read the chapters, and she figured out the gaps, and she worked on it for about 60 days and it gives you a code to take a second exam. And on that second exam, she'd gone up to 87%. So sometimes it's just, we're, we're not paying attention, but that's a great book to work on your emotional intelligence. And your, it will help you with your social intelligence, raising that sales versatility. So you want to be- Debbie, you've got, me, you've got me curious now. Tell me the book again, or let's just make it's sure- It's emotional. Yeah, I've got it here. Oh, hold on. I got it right here. It's this one. Emotional Intelligence 2.0. And it's okay. uh, 
Travis Bradbury is the author, but really, but you see, it's not a, it's not a big book. I have this habit of folding down corners on pages I like, and I folded down almost every corner. Uh, very worth it, guys. This is a great book and a great study because it will help you improve your negotiation skills tremendously. Also, people are like a puzzle. Think about it like I, I really do envision this in my head. It helps me when I've got somebody difficult that I'm working with. I take it, I think, okay, why are they difficult for me? Why, what am I not understanding? You know, Chris Voss says, if you think your client is crazy, they're probably not. You just haven't figured them out. So I think about, oh, I'm dumping this puzzle box upside down and I'm putting all the pieces together their motivation, the stresses in their life, you know, their, their, their age, because they might like prefer face-to-face -face versus technology, their culture. Did they move here from another country and they negotiate in a different fashion? Then I work to mirror and match their rate of speech. I work to create a language of agreement, which is acknowledging, validating, and then that rapport, trying to find that common ground. And if you can just stay calm, do your best never to create sides in a negotiation and shield the other party from emotions. So I'll share with you a couple things here. Chris Suarez and I did this topic at Built How Together. And Chris shared that he would, in a negotiation, he will never go back to the other agent and say, my seller wants the buyer to do X. Instead, he'll say, I advised my seller that they should request X. He said, I fall on my sword. I want the buyers and sellers to stay liking each other. I don't want to drive a wedge between that relationship. So if something tough has to be handled, I say, I recommended that this be done. And I thought that was really smart. Love that. And then shielding the, the other party from emotions. Uh, let me give you an example of that. So let's pretend Sean is the listing agent and Janice here on the webinar with us is my buyer. And Janice did her physical inspection and we didn't buy as is. And we put a very logical request for repairs together and Sean calls me up and says, this is ridiculous. My seller said, absolutely not. And my seller said, he's mad you even asked because he sold the house at a great price to her. And she's so lucky she got it. He'll just put it back on and goes through all this drama, right? Now, what is our human tendency to call Janice and go, Janice, this is what he said. And this is what the seller said. And this is what happened. What's Janice going to do? She's going to get mad. I'm probably gonna blow up the deal. Now, do I need to tell her the truth? Absolutely. Do I need to share the drama? No. So I can go to Janice and say, you know, Janice, the seller's position is that they priced the home well. It had 10 offers in 24 hours and they accepted yours and they know that you didn't purchase as is However, they feel that these are minor issues and they just don't have the time or interest to do them. So they said, we need to do them if we're going to move forward with the purchase. And you know what, Janice, it's a small amount of items. I know you love the home. They can sell the home to someone else if you prefer. My recommendation is we just get them done and move forward with the deal right? Big difference, right guys? So don't do that because sometimes you feel like it makes you seem more of a hero if you're fighting these battles and slaying these dra dragons and you bump, you know, bring all that drama. They can't handle it. They lose their mind. It's already stressful enough and allow them a way to save face. If you have to confront someone like Sean with his, his pricing, I could say, you know, Sean, I know that when you had the thought of not adjusting the price, that was before I shared with you 
the four new properties that have come on the market that we're competing with. So now that you know about those, shouldn't we reconsider and make that adjustment? See, I'm allowing him to say, well, yeah, now, now that I know about them, yeah, 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 that makes sense, right? Let them save face. And this is what Chris said, a master negotiator will take a sword on behalf of the client. They will use the words, I advised, instead of they decided. This allows the client to always be the good guy. And by all means, become an industry expert. That gives you more confidence, improve your product and market knowledge. That allows you to weave in that data-driven conversation that is the logic that helps uh, them justify their emotions. So secret number three, we'll go fast negotiation tactics, questions, critical, learn great questions, study great questions, ask great questions. In fact, before any important negotiation, write down three to five questions that you should bring to that meeting. Stack them in order of importance, asking the tougher ones first. Storytelling, this reminds me of a time or this is just like a situation. May I share with you something that happened to a customer last week? See, our brain loves stories and social proof. What happened to others is very powerful. Now, if you're in the middle of a negotiation and it starts to get red hot, super heated, and they're trying to attack you, I'm not saying you should be abused. It's just don't take the bait, right? Two, they cannot fight with you unless you fight back with them, right? They can do whatever they want, but you don't have to participate. And if you can just step away from that situation, say, you know what? You're very upset. Let's take a break. Let's take a break. I'll call you back in two hours and be patient. Even some of the nicest people lose their mind in a real estate deal. And then work to anticipate the objections, the questions, the responses they might say, the necessary data and information. So in other words, prepare well. And as Chris Voss said, be prepared to take a punch and then come right back into that situation. And then this is a good little wrap up here, Sean. At the end of each negotiation, and I consider asking for a price adjustment in negotiation, I consider taking a listing in negotiation, certainly offer negotiations, but at the end of any negotiation, ask yourself, what did I do right? What did not go well? And what will I do differently the next time? And then you know what? Let it go to the clouds, right? We're not perfect. We're a work in progress. But I always feel that if I screwed something up really badly, but I learned from that, and that's going to help my clients in the future, and it's going to make me lots and lots of money in the future, hey, then it was worth the pain of screwing it up, right? So just encourage you guys, you know, work, read some great books, you know, absolutely, as um, I think Janice was saying, I think if you don't want to buy the hard copy, you can download the book and then you can take that test online. I like the hard copy just because it, when your score isn't where you want it to be potentially, you can go back and you can read the book and find the chapter and work on the piece that's important to you. So, Sean, if they want to talk to us about what it's like to work with forwarding coaching, you know, we don't just coach accountability. What'd you do? What'd you do? We look at the whole person. Remember, you're a puzzle. <laughs> you're a puzzle. And we help you get where you want to be. So you can just scan that QR code and we'll reach out and get you talking to me. Sean, anything you want to say goodbye with here? Because I know we're just about out of time. Got about two minutes left. Debbie, we're getting better every day and we appreciate this training. This was huge. Removing the emotion, becoming and always being the professional. I love these types of reminders. So everybody out there, make sure you're giving forward coaching some love. We all need a coach. This QR code will point you in the right direction to do that. All right, guys. I'm glad you enjoyed it. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. See you guys.